Albrecht von Haller was a Swiss anatomist, physiologist, naturalist, and poet. A pupil of Hermann Bauer have, he is often referred to as the father of modern physiology. Early life Haller was born into an old Swiss family at Bern. Prevented by long-continued ill health from taking part in boyish sports, he had more opportunity for the development of his precocious mind. At the age of four, it is said, he used to read and expound the Bible to his father's servants, before he was ten he had sketched a Chaldee grammar, prepared a Greek and a Hebrew vocabulary, compiled a collection of 2,000 biographies of famous men and women on the model of the great works of Bell and Maury, and written in Latin verse a satire on his tutor, who had warned him against a too great excursiveness. When still hardly fifteen he was already the author of numerous metrical translations from Ovid, Horace, and Virgil, as well as of original lyrics, dramas, and an epic of four thousand lines on the origin of the Swiss confederations, writings which he is said on one occasion to have rescued from a fire at the risk of his life, only, however, to burn them a little later, 1729, with his own hand. Medicine Haller's attention had been directed to the profession of medicine while he was residing in the house of a physician at Beale after his father's death in 1721. While still a sickly and excessively shy youth, he went in his sixteenth year to the University of Tübingen, December 1723, where he studied under Elias Rudolf Camerarius Jr. and Johann Duvernois. Dissatisfied with his progress, he in 1725 exchanged Tübingen for Leiden, where Bauerhav was in the zenith of his fame, and where Albinus had already begun to lecture in anatomy. At that university he graduated in May 1727, undertaking successfully in his thesis to prove that the so-called salivary duct, claimed as a recent discovery by George Daniel Koschwitz, 1679-1729, was nothing more than a blood vessel. In 1752, at the University of Göttingen, Haller published his thesis, De Partibus Corporis Humani Sensibilibus et Irritabilibus, discussing the distinction between sensibility and irritability in organs, suggesting that nerves were sensible because of a person's ability to perceive contact while muscles were irritable because the fiber could measurably shorten on its own, regardless of a person's perception, when excited by a foreign body. Later in 1757, he conducted a famous series of experiments to distinguish between nerve impulses and muscular contractions. Other Disciplines Haller then visited London, making the acquaintance of Sir Hans Sloane, William C. H. E. S. Eldon, John Pringle, James Douglas, and other scientific men. Next, after a short stay in Oxford, he visited Paris, where he studied under Henri Francois L. E. Dran and Jacob Winslow and in 1728 he proceeded to Basel, where he devoted himself to the study of higher mathematics under John Bernoulli. It was during his stay there also that his interest in botany was awakened, and, in the course of a tour, July-August, 1728, through Savoy, Baden and several of the cantons of Switzerland, he began a collection of plants which was afterwards the basis of his great work on the flora of Switzerland. From a literary point of view the main result of this, the first of his many journeys through the Alps, was his poem entitled Die Alpen, which was finished in March 1729, and appeared in the first edition, 1732, of his Gedicht. This poem of 490 hexameters is historically important as one of the earliest signs of the awakening appreciation of the mountains though it is chiefly designed to contrast the simple and idyllic life of the inhabitants of the Alps with the corrupt and decadent existence of the dwellers in the plains. In 1729 he returned to Bern and began to practice as a physician, his best energies, however, were devoted to the botanical and anatomical researches which rapidly gave him a European reputation, and procured for him from George II in 1736 a call to the Chair of Medicine, Anatomy, Botany and Surgery in the newly founded University of Göttingen. He became a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1743, a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1747, and was ennobled in 1749. 
The quantity of work achieved by Haller in the 17 years during which he occupied his Göttingen professorship was immense. Apart from the ordinary work of his classes, which entailed the task of newly organizing a botanical garden, now the old botanical garden of Göttingen University, an anatomical theatre and museum, an obstetrical school, and similar institutions, he carried on without interruption original investigations in botany and physiology, the results of which are preserved in the numerous works associated with his name. He also continued to persevere in his youthful habit of poetical composition, while at the same time he conducted a monthly journal, the Gottagisk Gallert and Zijan, to which he is said to have contributed 12,000 articles relating to almost every branch of human knowledge. He also warmly interested himself in most of the religious questions, both ephemeral and permanent, of his day, and the erection of the Reformed Church in Göttingen was mainly due to his unwearied energy. Like his mentor Bayer Hav, Haller was a Christian and a collection of his religious thoughts can be read in a compilation of letters to his daughter. Notwithstanding all this variety of absorbing interests, Haller never felt at home in Göttingen, his untraveled heart kept on turning towards his native Bern, where he had been elected a member of the Great Council in 1745, and in 1753 he resolved to resign his chair and return to Switzerland. Botany Haller made important contributions to botanical taxonomy that are less visible today because he resisted binomial nomenclature, Carl Linnaeus's innovative shorthand for species names that was introduced in 1753 and marks the starting point for botanical nomenclature as accepted today. Haller was among the first botanists to realize the importance of herbaria to study variation in plants, and he therefore purposely included material from different localities, habitats, and developmental phases. Haller also grew many plants from the Alps himself. The plant genus Hilaria, an attractive shrub from southern Africa, was named in his honor by Carl Linnaeus. Later Life The 21 years of his life which followed were largely occupied in the discharge of his duties in the minor political post of a rathaus man which he had obtained by lot and in the preparation of his Bibliotheca Medica, the botanical, surgical and anatomical parts of which he lived to complete, but he also found time to write the three philosophical romances Yusong, 1771, Alfred, 1773, and Fabius and Cato, 1774, in which his views as to the respective merits of despotism, of limited monarchy and of aristocratic republican government are fully set forth. About 1773 the state of his health meant he withdrew from public business. He supported his failing strength by means of opium, on the use of which he communicated a paper to the proceedings of the Göttingen Royal Society in 1776, the excessive use of the drug is believed, however, to have hastened his death. Haller who had been three times married, left eight children. The eldest, Gottlieb Emanuel, attained to some distinction as a botanist and as a writer on Swiss historical bibliography, 1785-1788, seven vols. Another son, Albrecht was also a botanist. See also Asterisk History of Anatomy in the 17th and 18th centuries Importance for Homeopathy Albrecht von Haller is quoted in the footnote to paragraph 108 in the Organon of Medicine, the principal work by the founder of homeopathy, Samuel Hahnemann. In this paragraph, Hahnemann describes how the curative powers of individual medicines can only be ascertained through accurate observation of their specific effects on healthy persons. Not one single physician, as far as I know, during the previous 2,500 years, thought of this so natural so absolutely necessary and only genuine mode of testing medicines for their pure and peculiar effects in deranging the health of man, in order to learn what morbid state each medicine is capable of curing, except the great and immortal Albrecht von Haller. He alone, besides myself, saw the necessity of this, vide the preface to the Pharmacopoeia Helvet, Basil, 1771, FOL, P.12, Nem primum in corpore sano medilitent and a est, sign peregrina ola micella, oderc et sapor egis explorer atis, 
exigua iliodosis ingerenda et ad ohms, qui and contingunt, affections, keys pulses, key calor, qui respiratia, qui nom excretions, attendum. Ind ad ductum phenomenorum, insano obviorum, transes ad experimenta in corpore e groro, etc. But no one, not a single physician, attended to or followed up this invaluable hint. The quotation from Haller's preface may be translated from the Latin as follows, of course, firstly the remedy must be proved on a healthy body, without being mixed with anything foreign, and when its odor and flavor have been ascertained, a tiny dose of it should be given and attention paid to all the changes of state that take place, what the pulse is, what heat there is, what sort of breathing and what exertions there are. Then in relation to the form of the phenomena in a healthy person from those exposed to it, you should move on to trials on a sick body. Reception Hegel mentions Haller's description of eternity, called by Kant terrifying, in his Science of Logic. According to Hegel, Haller realizes that a conception of eternity as infinite progress is futile and empty. In a way, Hegel uses Haller's description of eternity as a foreshadowing of his own conception of the true infinite. Hegel claims that Haller is aware that, only by giving up this empty, infinite progression can the genuine infinite itself become present to him.